I'm actually publicly a Beyonce fan, so I don't mind telling you, disclosing that I'm a Beyonce fan. So last week in Paris, she played in a huge stadium, like 5,000 people, I don't even know. And you know, you, you know how it's like in stadium, you sit at the back, your feet hurt, you find it exciting, and you're like going with the flow, right? And today, as I was walking to this conference, thanks to social media, I found out on an Instagram video that she was lip syncing the concert. So she was actually singing, and I'm not gonna pretend I'm Beyonce here, but she was singing, and then she, she did this. Nothing. And the song was, the song was playing, the song was playing and then she took the mic again. So that was a disillusion for me more than a mistake, but also a sign that 10 years ago, we, no one would knew, right? Today, truth is actually closer to us and quicker to, uh, to be revealed. Okay, so there you have it. Um, revealed by social media, um, exploding the myths. So let's get right down to it. And uh, I think the question that uh, for me, it was the first question that uh, uh, I thought of when uh, I was asked to, to speak to you today, which was, how has social media changed business in the last decade, let's say? How has it changed business, and has it changed all businesses? And if so, how? So, ladies first, Carol. Um, so, if you look at the, quickly at the history of social media, it's been about 10 years that we've been talking extensively about social media, about the category social media. And what happened, as you noticed, in the past 10 years, is that social media, for us as individuals, has changed the way we express ourselves. So we have more freedom, we have quicker access to news, we have the right to choose whatever news, whatever product we think is relevant. For those of you who are older in the room, like, uh, let's say, above 30, you may remember having bought a plane ticket uh, to New York and you would go to a travel agent and wait patiently five minutes for the travel agent to give you what's the best deal to go to New York from Tel Aviv, right? You remember the wait and you remember that when she told you it was Elal, you had to believe her. Today, with social media and the, uh, the rise of the internet, we have the power to choose whatever information we want and to compare. Well. This significant growth of social media has enabled now businesses to be able to embrace uh, the data, the knowledge, the pace of uh, the internet and actually leverage it for three main things. The first thing is hiring. So before we would used to uh, wait month to hire the best talent and to find the, right, the best talent. Now with the power of the data, it's actually a lot quicker to um, look at talent and to connect with talent. The second thing is to market. We use social media to market increasingly uh, to the right consumers. And the third thing is to sell, because we use our relationships and our network to connect with the right uh, consumers. So from this perspective, uh, businesses have understood that it's no longer a question of another channel. It's actually becoming central in their strategies in those three areas. Shokat. Uh, so when social media started, as, um, as an industry goes, we, we love inventing terms. Um, and we invented a lot of terms in the past, as you know, and social media is something that actually has stuck. Because it's actually fundamentally very simple. So when you said, is it um, <clears throat> transforming businesses? Uh, sure it is. Of course it is. But it's not social media that is transforming business. Businesses are becoming social, right? So, um, you know, um, like a uh, lot of people thought that how we interact as a community and as a uh, civilization, you know, people are naturally social. So, like, we, we, you didn't have to invent it, right? So, without, now the tools are just enabling what we normally do, right? So, and and it is first taking out the inefficiencies of the system, like she was talking about, but then it is actually also enabling things that, again, we naturally do, and this all in, into human traits that when you look at, like what we really do, like we talked a little bit of Instagram, what do you do? We love, you know, we, we, human beings are visual, so we like first taking visual, capturing visual, then telling other people visually. So all those things 
are actually just uh, being enabled by the technology. And it's not only going to change, I think it's going to fundamentally um, transform how businesses think about themselves going forward. Now, I'm, I'm a journalist, so uh, when uh, I started being a journalist before, before the papers I wrote for were even on the web, and then they started appearing on the web, and then I found I could, I could send them to people, and then I found I could share them with people, and, uh, and those buttons started popping up at the bottom of my stories, so I could share them on Facebook, I could share them on Twitter, I could share them on... And now if I click the share button, at the bottom of any of my stories, 50 different buttons pop up, and it would take me as long as I've taken to write the story uh, to actually share it with, with everybody on all those platforms. Are we, are we reaching a point of social media fatigue? Uh, is there, are we being swamped by all these huge number of choices available to us? How much more time can we actually spend on these platforms before they start becoming less efficient and not more efficient? Um, personally, I think it's, I don't, not only do I not think that we've reached a, a fatigue, but I think it's only the beginning, may I say. Because if you look at any uh, technology, no matter where you talk about, mobile, social media, or any new technology disrupting a market, there's a similar uh, technology adoption curve, right? which starts with probably early adopter, then burst of enthusiasm, then some kind of stability, which is a moment where everyone is a master of the technology. So today, when you talked about 50 share buttons, you know there might be a lot of share buttons, but you know which one matters. You know which one will talk to your audience. You know which one is relevant for this particular content. So I think it's only the beginning because we're getting at a stage where it's not a matter of how much time we spend, it's a matter of how well we know how to use social media. And we know this social media is for this usage and this social media is for something else. Um, and for me, as a, really so, uh, as a real social media enthusiast, I use a lot of social media as part of my daily routine, whether it's on mobile or desktop. And one of the things I recommend you do, and of course, it's a LinkedIn product, but you will like this one, uh, it's a really uh, new product that we've launched which is the publishing platform, uh, which is 30,000 long form posts that we've just have on the platform, which is all of us writing on LinkedIn. So it's not just um, social media as we know it, it's social media enhanced that actually includes long form posting from all of us. And I encourage you to take a look at that and follow people who you respect and admire. Shoka, Carol says, we know which of those buttons is the best one to press at any particular moment. But how do we as consumers and how do we as businesses know which of those social media is actually working the best for us personally or for us as businesses? So there, there are two things in it. And I, I would say there is a reason you see 50 buttons in there because as human being again, we love toys. Right? So when a new one comes up, you uh, tend to use it a little bit, right? I mean, um, I remember in a, a conversation um, in, uh, in 1998, something like that, when um, uh, Lycos, uh, we, we, so we were in Yahoo, Lycos, and Excite, we were being head on, and same question you have today is which one is the bigger network? We had that question in the past, like, who mattered? So I remember this conversation vividly, Lycos came out with this uh, press release where they said if you submit a site to them, it is listed on their site in like 30 seconds or something, and in Yahoo it takes uh, like a month or so. And we were like, me being very naive, were like, oh my god, we need to use a crawler, right? And, um, and uh, Philo, who is the founder who actually was next my cube, and he looked at all the things telling him why we should use a crawler, and he looked at me and said, uh, yes, it gets listed, but what's the listing number? 3,560-something. Can you get to that page? So you got my point. My point is nobody gets to the 3 million page. So you asked a question, like how do we know uh, as a business? It's actually very simple for a business, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, like I post on Facebook, I post on LinkedIn, I get this response, and I post on some XYZ, and there's da, nothing. 
So um, you will have this factor of like excitement, new stuff, uh, and if it there is a fade out period, and that is actually very fast when it starts fading out. It, so the, the strongest will survive. So the LinkedIn, Facebooks, and the other ones will, will because the the network effect has taken multiple levels. So the um, as, as a new business, um, you would. Again, we'll try some of this stuff, but you will most definitely gonna go to the largest established network. You will, obviously. Let's move to advertising on, on social media. Um, how's it doing? Will, will the performance and the prices and the revenues mimic that of the search engine marketing ecosystem, or is a, a different model being created? So, no, I, I think that's a, that's a good question, but I don't think that's a, that's a right question to ask. Uh, the reason is there's two different contexts. So I, I personally believe, so how many people know how big advertising world is as a dollar amount? A oh, few. So let me tell you, it is one of the largest industries in the world. $573 billion spent worldwide, half a trillion dollars. Okay, how many people love ads? Raise hand. Nobody. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, nobody seems to like ad. So just because you put a spin in it, like not all the hands gonna go out. So there are f some fundamental things that are wrong in it. So let me tell you why search works. Okay, search is actually useful. Right? When you're searching for something, that said, hey, you're, we know you're searching for X. So here's some X that you may like. Sh give me an example of that in any other medium. What? Advertising actually has been useful. Okay, there's only one other I can think of, which is um, if you watch like NFL or Super Bowls. Um, in Super Bowl, we actually give television ads, and you know why that's interesting? Because that's entertaining. So it's giving you entertaining values. But besides that, nothing else is really useful. So initially, we thought a lot of this advertising is just a same spin of of. Uh, is on a different platform. Surely it wouldn't work. Like, come on, why would it work? It, it hasn't worked on web or anywhere else, right? So on that context, I think anybody who's trying to create a different spin on the social media on this one is doomed for death. I mean, they're gonna, it, it's just not gonna work. Now, with that said though, there is a scarcity factor on this one. Let me tell you what that is. So um, you see that Facebook, on this, sorry, in this one, I gotta use the Facebook example, uh, is making their revenue on mobile is going through the roof. There's only one phenomenon that is re that's the real reason behind it, and that is Apple. There is 1.3 million apps that are on App Store alone, right? If you are after number 19, which is that only 20 apps are kind of displayed, what do you do? So you spend money on Facebook, so they put their like install in front of people and a lot of people click on it. That's it. That's what the uh, revenue is. So besides that, if you think about, nothing else is really working. So commerce and social is kind of known as really not working well because people mind context is different. And I think those are the fundamental reasons. Carol. Advertising, how's it going? So advertising is going really well from uh, my observations because marketeers are actually seizing the opportunity now, which is one of creating relationships. The difference between internet and social media, like the internet as we knew before social media and the internet of today, is that it's based on relationships on a two-way street. So when you, you start from the assumption that what matters is understanding the value of relationships, then it's not about advertising anymore. And probably the next generation of marketeers will not call advertising advertising, right? They may call it something completely different, and maybe that may include marketing engagement. They may call it something completely different. And what marketeers are doing now, and I can quote a number of brands, be it FMCG or high tech or finance, who, has, who have understood that it's no longer a question of advertising, of capturing the attention. It's a question of engaging with the right stories. So when you think about Minority Report, some people say that the only mistake Stolberg did when he wrote Minority Report when it comes to marketing 
advertising, actually. As you remember, Tom Cruise walking down the hall with advertising that's actually targeted to his needs. Remember that scene from the movie? The only mistake Spielberg did was that he thought it was going to be 2019. Well, in reality, the advertising as we know it today is powered by not only the right stories, so brands understanding the value of content, but also targeted stories, leveraging data to make sure the story is relevant. Now, data is obviously the touchstone of social media marketing. Uh, I remember, must have been 20, 25 years ago in Britain, uh, there's a supermarket chain called Tesco. And they introduced the first loyalty card in a supermarket chain. And uh, people went absolutely nuts because uh, they found that customers who were uh, Tesco Club members were receiving special offers based on the data that Tesco had collected uh, that saw what they were shopping for and it offered them special offers based on their shopping list, a very early, early data analytics. And uh, the, 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 the press in, in Britain went absolutely crazy. The invasion of privacy, the collection of personal data, how dare you uh, see that I prefer Kellogg's Corn Flakes to uh, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, uh, and they went absolutely nuts. Now, we've moved on a long way, obviously, in the last 20 or 25 years, but there are still privacy issues. We've seen that with all the controversies about Facebook and how it's handling uh, it, its data it, over the last year. Is there a golden mean? Is there a balance that we can achieve? Or have we already achieved the balance between the importance <coughs> of data analytics to business and the need to preserve uh, users' privacy, on the other hand? Shoka. So um, I think a lot of people think what data and privacy is, is um, like how you uh, mentioned about Tesco. By the way, they had great ice cream. Um, is, people actually, uh, so I've done a lot of, uh, actually I've done many companies on just based on data itself. So we did a lot of um, real uh, study in Yahoo we did. We actually asked a lot of people, would you care? We give people opt-out method and all those things. So what we, are, what we found is actually really interesting that people actually would rather give you that data. There are very few, you know what they really are asking you? Is, you know, uh, don't use my data inappropriately. That's what they are really asking you. They're saying, so, and then don't do anything bad means like, don't sell my data though I get those weird stuff on my mail, right? Don't annoy me. That's all they're saying. If you are true to what uh, the intention is, most of the people like, would you like to see crappy ad uh, when you browse or would you like to get something that is meaningful to you? So I would say almost 100% people would say meaningful something, right? It makes sense. So people, consumer are doing that. So um, the value for the businesses on this, that um, how, how data is meaningful or all those things, it, again, it's not a new thing. We, we always knew it, come on, it makes sense. If you, somebody is going to a grocery store and say, hey, would you like something for uh, $10 off? I would say, well, yeah, why wouldn't I? It goes back to the same concept I was talking about before in advertising. I call it value creation. Any time in, in this history when we created real values, right, people won. Just imagine LinkedIn, what she was talking about, right? LinkedIn advertising actually works really well. You know why? Because they actually give real values, right? They connect to the right audience in the real values. So whenever we do that, consumers are okay with it, business make a lot of profit, and in net net is a positive experience. When you break those things, it you create noise, you create regulations, you create a lot of other things.